So I'm going to start with the uh, surface mount components uh, as instructed by the assembly videos. I've got a very fine tip here on the pencil. Get a little bit of solder on it, get it cleaned up. It's really the finest tip I have for my uh, JVC pencil. And I'm going to attempt to essentially solder this one pin at a time. Hopefully my flux pin hasn't gone bad. I have another pin where the pin failed and it just this huge amount of flux came out. There it goes. It's got a lot of flux on the board. This so isn't quite where I'd like it to be. Let's spread it around a bit. Make sure it's over all of the pads. I've got the IC sitting here. Pin one is rotated to where it goes on the board. I'm working with uh, the best magnification I have glasses wise since my close up vision is no longer what it used to be. Comes with getting old, and we're just going to add a little bit of solder to that first pad. We're going to slide the device over into place, and we're going to see. It's not quite square. Still not quite square. A tiny, a tiny bit more. It's square. The pads are reasonably centered. Now I'm going to use the technique of just letting the solder transfer from the tip down through. And hopefully that will uh, be enough to solder it. That's part of why the flux helps. Sorry if my head's in the way here. I don't like the way that first pin looks. Spin the board around, and of course it's going to be out of shot. Spun around this way. And I will attempt the same thing with the other three pins. Sorry for the glare from the camera or the, the LED lighting. I need a lot of light to work. solder. If you get too much solder and get a bridge, you can of course use some braid to remove it. So one of the reasons we put solder on the first pad and then slid the device into it was if we had solder on all the other pads and tried to put it in place, it wouldn't sit flush to the board. And we want it down flush to the board. So there's a fair amount of solder on this pin, more than it really needs, that looks better. So with that done, I'm going to get the ohm meter out, I'm going to put it in continuity mode. If I can find the printout I brought up. I took a high res, high res scan of the board to make it a little easier to do this, and I'm going to go through and look for shorts and continuity. And this will be a little bit tricky to do here just because everything is so small. Uh, continuity would help. So let's see, that first pin goes to there. The second pin goes 3M. And I shouldn't have a short between them when I don't. The third pin comes to right here. And I shouldn't have a short to the second pin. The fourth pin comes down to here. And the third pin is there. And I don't have a short to it. This is looking good so far. 
This pin down here comes to here. This next pin goes up to here. And I don't have a short to the adjacent pin. This third pin comes to here. And I, you know, I'm going to check it for a short to here. And I believe the fourth pin here is a ground. So it's a, where can I find a ground on this? Uh, that should be a ground there. And it is. And then the third pin came down to here. So we look good there. I don't see shorts between any of the pins. And I see continuity from touching the top of the solder joint kind of back to the board. So that's a pretty good indication. He's in there okay. And just to try to capture this a little bit better, this is an awful dark image. Let's see if I can draw on it and make things a little more obvious. Looking at the trace from this pad here, it came over to there. This really isn't going to show up. And the trace from the second pad came up to here. So I tested continuity between that capacitor and there, and it was good. I tested continuity from this pad up here to the second pin, and then I tested continuity between the two here to make sure they were open. That told me there was no shorts. And I just followed the traces and worked my way around the board, just like that. So we've got the little ROM in. Again, I can see the dimple in the package is where the little white dot here is on the board, so I've got it in the right orientation. So that's one piece down. We go on now to the uh, little SD card holder. Let's see if I can get it to peel out of the package in here. I'm going to be somewhat gingerly with it. So it's got pretty tight pin spacing. The little dimples do grab and kind of hold it in place. I don't remember the order he did this. I think I'm going to go ahead and tack one of the... Actually, we want to flux that up first and then I'll talk through what I'm about to do. So we want to add a little bit of flux. One of these. Flux again just aids in removing the oxide so the solder will take easier. Flux pin back in the in case it leaks. I said I've had one of these leak horribly. And I had one when I pressed the plunger down, all of the flux came out and created this huge nasty puddle. Let's set that back in approximate place. I'm going to solder this little tab over here. Again, if I'm doing this in a different order than he recommends, uh, let's see if I can get enough heat off this tiny tip to actually get that to join. Oops. How centered are the pins? I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now I'm working with the JBC professional soldering station here. And it has an incredibly high heat capacity. So even on a little tiny tip like this, I can actually get solder to melt well up against something like this little uh, SD card. So. That's going to help your visibility or not. I know my hands are getting in the way. That's why I'm shooting with two cameras. Hopefully one camera or the other is catching. I'm going to do the same thing. Clean the tip. I'm going to get just a tiny bit of solder on there. And solder that. It's too much. Tiny bit of solder on the second pin. 
my soft flow tiny bit of solder on the third pin now I'm using more solder than he did he wetted the tip once and walked across uh, I'm wetting the tip really for pretty much every joint here again I have an incredibly tiny tip here which is why I can get away with this versus he was using a larger tip so when he wetted it held more solder time and patience if you're intimidated by surface mount soldering buy a practice kit learn how to use the continuity mode on your meter that didn't take any solder at all test your work looking for continuity where there should be continuity the final pin here didn't want to take any solder it didn't tips oxidizing so I'm not getting solder to actually adhere well to the tip. Don't really like the way that looks. We'll add a little tiny bit more. I don't like the look of that joint. It was rather gray and not shiny. It does look good to me. Before I tack down the other two uh, pads on the metal can there. I'm going to check continuity. I don't know how well you can see this in the board design. Uh, something to point with here. Each one of these pins just comes out in order to these guys here. There's a final pin here that looks like it's floating. It might be grounded. It was hard to say. But I should be able to check continuity here to here and then pin two to there all the way across then I can just ohm or uh, continuity test between these to make sure they're all open so let's do that actually I'll check to make sure I don't have any bridges first so nope 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 that all looks good now let's Can't tell if that's somebody doing fireworks outside or not. It's July 5th here. Apparently that's ground. So it looks like this wider trace here. This wider trace here is a ground. We didn't see any shorts. We see continuity across them all. So that's a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and tack down these back two pins here. And I would say we have the uh, SD card mounted there so uh, I will wrap this video up for the surface mount components and I'll see you in the next video